welcome to another edition of uh, Beginner Breakdown. I am your host, Mike Hummer. Uh, just last weekend, the uh, club hosted the 2015 Chess Club Championship, won by none other than our very own Grandmaster, Ben Feingold, and a couple Webster kids, uh, Eric Rosen and uh, Ashwin Jarawam. All right, so many great games were played, and we will not be watching those. Instead, we got the lower boards. So, uh, big round five matchup between Ken West and Matthew Manley. The winner would get $200. All right. So, Ken West has the white pieces. All right. And they don't let me go. All right. So, he starts out D4. Black counters with D5. Knight F3. Knight F6. Now, if you've been watching my lectures, you know there's a move I would not recommend here. E3, it, it's very, very bad to box in your bishop that early for no considerable reason, okay? So we'll see how uh, Ken West's bishop does in this game. So now black decides I'm going to get my bishop free of the, my pawn chain and play bishop to f5, gaining more space. So now Ken goes with the c4 and black plays c6. Ideas like queen to b3, unfortunately, do not work for Ken West in this position because black could simply defend the b pawn with queen to c7. So, not too good. So, he just brings out his knight. And now black plays e6. And notice, with this bishop on f5, he's doing a lot better than just sitting there on c8. All right, so now white decides, I'm just going to bring my bishop out to e2. So black captures it, bishop captures back. So by taking on uh, c4 with the black pieces, uh, what move can white now get excited about possibly playing later on? The move e4. So we'll see if there's a, there's a right time to strike with e4. So bishop takes c4, now bishop to b4, pins the knight. So he gets castled and no longer has to worry about the pin. So black should just castle as soon as he can, but instead he decides getting his knight off the back row is more important, which is not true. So white plays the move bishop to d2. And the bishop d2 is a pretty weak move. You want, you want your bishops being more active and attacking, not just on d2. And now black plays queen to c7. Let's see if we can figure out a really good move for white here. And hint, Ken West does not see it. <laughs> All right. So let's be better than Ken West. What move did, did we say we really wanted to get in for white here? E4. E4. All right. But it looks like, you know, we only have one defender of E4 when he's got two. So what would happen if we played E4 and we took it? Bad things would happen because then the knight takes the bishop. And now we have this bishop under attack. So if he takes, right, we'll take. And if this bishop takes the bishop, what move do we play? Yes. Um, knight to um, B? Um. <laughs> how, about, how about D? D. D. Either knight, actually. D. And then we're up a piece for a pawn. So you got to be always be looking for uh, tactics. But instead, uh, Ken West plays the uh, head scratcher uh, bishop to e2. Okay. So so now the bishop goes to uh, d6, and now he's got a uh, queen bishop on the same diagonal. That's called a battery. And uh, you usually want the queen, the more powerful piece, going first, because then it could be a potential checkmate if the knight wasn't there instead of just a bishop check. All right, so Ken West is afraid of it, so he plays g3. So black gets castled, 
And uh, you know, Ken gets his rook going. So now black is going to uh, move some pawns on the queen side here. So now Ken puts his rook on the same file as the queen. So, so what tactic is Ken threatening right here? Knight takes b5, right. Because if he would just make a, a silly move and the knight takes, pawn would not be able to take because bye bye queen. OK, so, so Matthew uh, sees it. He defends it with a6. So now Ken decides he's going to put his bishop back to f1 and get bn shed. OK. So black attacks the knight, bishop there. All right, before, actually, yeah, bishop g2, OK. Now the, the knight goes there. And now Ken gets an e4, finally. And now his bishop might be able to play, finally. And now what is the big threat with e4 here? e5, yes. He'll get the, uh, the pawn fork. So his opponent, you know, he can see these things. So he, he plays e5 himself. So after captures, captures, right, attacks the bishop. So captures, queen takes. And now black gets his knight to c4, attacking the bishop. So it's simple. Your pieces attack, move it, right? OK. So he attacks the bishop again. So he captures it. And now Ken plays queen to f5. So he's eyeing at h7. Hopefully somebody can come and help him. So let's see. So. Moves his rook to e8 here and attacks the knight. So the knight is under attack. So, so, so knight d5 is played here, forking the queen and the bishop in the, in the live game. And uh, so knight takes with check, queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes. OK, so now in this position, who likes white here or who likes black? So, so the material is equal, but you know, black has these uh, double isolated pawns. So, so white should be ahead here, but white's got to deal with uh, one issue right now. What is black attacking right here if it was black to move? If he can get out of this tactic. He's attacking, he's going to force the rooks. Good, yeah, knight to d3. So, he takes over the d-file. So black protects his c-pawn. Attacks the knight. Knight retreats. Rook attacks the pawn. There's only one way. Well, there's probably a couple ways to save it. So he attacks there. He protects. Rook takes. Rook takes. And now the pawn is still under attack, so king protects it. Rook up. So he attacks, or he plays c5. So what is black's intentions right now with the move c5? Probably just play c4, c3, c2, c1. Yep. So, so instead, Ken's more, we've got a sights on uh, this loose pawn. So Matthew decides not to protect the A pawn and just go with his plan, c4. Pawn takes, pawn takes. So do you think it's a good idea for Ken to take this undefended pawn on a6? Yes. Yeah, because Matthew is only one, two, Three moves away from getting a queen here. So you have to address that situation. How would you address this? There's a couple different ways. Uh, the big thing is you want this bishop to help out. 
But unfortunately, they don't move like rooks, right? So what could we possibly do? Yes? Yeah, so this is, this, this is an idea, right? But it's kind of dangerous, because if this knight ever somehow gets around to d3 or a2, we're in a lot of trouble. But that might take them a while. But the bottom line is, the other, the other idea is play e5 and, uh, and try to get uh, your bishop going here. Uh, but after rook takes a6, there's no hope. That's, there's no way to stop it. The e5 is just too late. Because he just ignores the threat. <laughs> and c2 takes with check. So Matthew's got a queen now, and he's looking pretty good. So he wins the bishop with check. And now, can anybody see checkmate here? Matthew couldn't. <laughs> ben Feingold, we need a grandmaster on the case here. <laughs> Pawn h5, mate. OK. But unfortunately, he wants the queen checkmate. Check, still not mate. So now he gets frustrated. Uh, he can't figure out the checkmate, so he, he's just going to go win the rook. <laughs> and, uh, and he'll figure it out later. Was he under time pressure? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Now, now maybe he's going to figure out the mate here. Anybody find the mate here? Oh, uh, Richard finally got one. Yeah, work takes H5 like it's nothing, yeah. <laughs> Even Matthew Manley saw that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it did because King's got no place to go. All right. So that was a good one. And now we got Mario's game. Mario needed to win just to get a share of the under 1200 prize. So let's see, and get a, get a little bit of profit, get about $13 profit. All right, everybody's playing a stronger player, rated about 1300 okay? Mario's got the white pieces, so let's see how Mario does. Look at this, beautiful Mario, the first three moves. That's how everybody should be playing. And now he plays Ben Feingold's favorite move. One move too late though, but Queen C2, all right. D5. He attacks the bishop. Bishop retreats. And now Mario gets in e4 right away. Probably too fast, but whatever. The bottom line is his bishop is going to be nice. Oh, it should be. But, okay. So he takes e4. Good. Knight takes. Knight takes d4. Knight takes. Queen takes. And so. Murray decides, all right, I'll take with check. Bishop takes. And now, Murray, I bet you wish you didn't play your bishop to e2, but where do you think you should have played him? Well, where's the only other place he can move, right? I didn't want to play, I didn't want to play bishop to e3 because then you're going to get a pawn. No, bishop, where is he going to get a pawn if you play bishop to d3? Oh, right, right. You want to move your bishop to d3 here, okay? Yeah. All right, but he chooses e2. Castles, castles, bishop e7. Rook attacks the queen. Queen retreats. And now bishop d3. It's just, you're wasting moves here. All right, so h6, bishop to d2, okay? So bishop d2, you know... Like we were saying before, isn't the best, but in this position, it makes sense if Mario has a follow-up. So what is the natural follow-up in this position, Mario? I wanted to play, uh, I wanted to try to get that bishop, I wanted to try to get the bishop on d7. And... All right, all right. So, so in fact, you can win the bishop on d7 in this position. It just takes a couple moves. Yeah, which he kind of saw. 
But unfortunately, you didn't. At least, not yet. So does anybody, can everybody see how, look, this bishop is on d7 unprotected, okay? So that's really, if you want to win pieces, look at the ones that are unprotected. Especially if they're on the same line as some of your power pieces, right? Uh, bishop c3. Yeah, bishop c3 attacks the queen. The queen has to move. Or e, or e5, fine, fine. Or e5, it doesn't matter. And now, how do we win the bishop on d7? Bishop h7 check. Bishop h7 check, right. You could have you won this game in 15 moves, Mario. Yeah. So instead, he unfortunately played, instead of bishop to c3, played the move b4. Not good enough. Not good enough. All right. So now he plays bishop d6, and now none of the tricks work. Gets his rook over, bishop e5, bishop e3, rook over. So now Mario plays rook back to f1, and, uh, and so now his opponent luckily opened the C f or the F file for him, so now he's attacking the queen and can generate uh, some kind of kingside attack possibly. Rook F3, bishop attacks the rook. You gotta be really careful, well not really, but the bishop and the queen are both coming down on G2 here, but luckily the queen is protecting it. So obviously Mario just plays rook, uh, rook over, attacks the queen, and uh, queen retreats. All right, they attack the bishop. Bishop retreats. All right, so so it looks like a just a random move. I just move my queen over one square, no problem. Mario probably did it really slick, huh? All right, but what is the obvious threat here? Yeah, well, obviously you see it, but yeah, he's threatening checkmate. So he's got to do something about it. E5, okay. Interference. So bishop attacks the f pawn. Doesn't do anything about it. E4. And uh, unfortunately, e4 was not a good move because now he's got queen takes pawn check, and uh, you go into uh, h1. So queen offering the queen trade when you're up. You want to trade. Uh, Mario's not having any of it. So rook attacks the queen. Queen back. Queen h5. So queen h5 obviously threatens the move. Queen takes h6 if he plays a silly move. And now a pawn cannot capture it because it's in a pin. Okay. But he sees it, so he plays king to h8, which could be dangerous. All right, so rook attacks the pawn. So, so Mario. How many players do you have on F7 here? I'll give you a hint, two, right. And how many defenders does he have? One, one. <laughs> right. So if you have a two to one advantage and you can take something, by all means do it, right? Instead he attacks it again. He protects it again. Still not enough protectors, right? You got three and he's got two. You can still take it. Instead, you got another guy on it. <laughs> and uh, so, takes the queens. And now, obviously, Mario, just take the pawn already. But instead, he, he attacks the other pawn. So, how can black save uh, the F pawn and the G pawn simultaneously here? By playing the dreaded F6, okay? F6, oh, why is this not checkmate? Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, that's not checkmate. It's not checkmate. It's not checkmate because the um, bishop Yeah, the bishop can eat him. All right. So, so Mario, why don't you play this move and threaten checkmate? That would have been good. But all right, instead you want to get your king over one. <laughs> well, right, but you never know, you never know. If you can threaten checkmate, just do it. All right. 
So now Mario's got his king going. Now all the bishop and rook checkmate combinations are off the table. Not yet. Not yet. All right. So they're playing a little dance. Mario doesn't want to trade bishops. His opponent wants to try to make him trade it, but Mario's not having it. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. And so if, if Mario would play rook takes here, what move would uh, black play to get his pawn right back? Any ideas? What can, yeah, notice this bishop is immobile because he's in a pin. He's in an absolute pin. So he can play bishop takes, and the bishop cannot capture back because he's in a pin. So, so OK, so Mario decides. Well, first things first, Mario decides, I'm going to check you. All right. So king goes back, and then, uh, and then he decides, I'm going to try to protect my e pawn, but nope. Rook, rook comes down, so captures, bishop captures, king up. Now, now he's got a real threat. Bishop takes bishop, so I'm sure he just trades him off. All right, so king to f7. It looks like uh, an all right move, but what does it allow white to play? Rook h7, putting the g pawn in a pin. So now black has to play. Rook to g8 if he wants to save it, which he does. And now he eliminates that pawn. So rook attacks the pawn, threatening check. There's really nothing Mario can do about it. So rook takes check, throws in another uh, meaningless check. And g6, which allows Mario to give him a check. Okay, now, now Mario, don't spoil it for everybody. So now. His king just walked into a mating net, OK? All right, so we got a very enthusiastic uh, gentleman back there. Once he moves the, uh, right, uh, the, uh, so, so bottom line is we do have to protect the rook. Protecting it with the king won't work because of rook to a4 check. Oh, if, he, if he moves the rook back to the other one, then we... Rook, move the rook back to the other rook? Love it. OK, so now. So now he's looking pretty good. But maybe it's not a mating net. But so he's got to stop this check. Got to stop. But he doesn't. So c6, and now check, king up. What move do we have? Let's get everybody involved with the checks. Yes. Unfortunately, if you move the rook down, no, the other oh, you don't want to move the other rook down, or else he just goes bye bye. Yes. No, like all the way down. Move the pawn up one. Excellent. Get everybody involved, and so it doesn't matter if he goes here or here. Uh, where is the checkmate? Richard, do you want to get get in on the uh, checkmate here? Rook h seven. <laughs> checkmate. He's really good at finding made him one. So that's his specialty. So here is the bottom board. Uh, Robert Beekman against chess club employee Lulu. OK, here we go. Uh, Robert Beekman has the white pieces. And Robert Beekman actually, even though he was 0-3, if he would win out his last two games or get a full point by somehow, he might end up Sharing the money with Mario. All right, so here we go. Knight f3. So, so he's got to buckle down and win this. All right. d5. g3. Bishop g2. d3. All right, e6. So, so everybody's playing uh, pretty decent here, except for that move, OK? Why, what is everybody's obsession with bishop to d2, OK? <laughs> it's not good, OK? And plus. If you're going to play bishop to g5, right, you've got to be expecting them to attack you, right? So either just take it and say, I wasn't bluffing, or, uh, or don't go there in the first place, OK? So, so, all right, so bishop back to d2. So white gets castled. 
black plays bishop d6. Does that really threaten anything? Uh, not really, because this pawn is heavily protected. A uh, better move might be uh, bishop to c5. At least you're, uh, you're pinning something, you know, pinning the f pawn. And because he's played bishop to d2, d4 is not a factor here. All right, so bishop d6, knight up, black gets castled. Rook e1 preparing e4. So queen to e7. Knight attacks the bishop. So what would you play as black here? Would you just say, all right, well, knights and bishops are worth the same. I'll just let them take and, uh, and get double pawns here. Would you like that? The answer should be no. So you can just retreat it. OK? Just retreat the bishop. All right, and that's what uh, Lulu did. So good. e4. And now attacks the knight. Knight to b5. So he doesn't want to trade, so plays bishop to c5. White plays f4. So now, what can we play here? f4. Oh, yeah, attack the knight. All right, so, so the knight is under attack, and obviously he doesn't want to retreat because of bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes. Oh, I know. If you move up. Well, oh, well, yeah, if you move up, you're in for a, a world of hurt because the rook is under attack, slides it over. Now, where's your knight going to go? The answer is nowhere. It's gone, OK? Yep, he's got no place to go. OK, so instead, uh, Robert makes a threat greater or equal to pawn takes knight with e5. So they take, take, they should take back with the knight, but she takes back with the uh, queen, and now she's netted a pawn out of that. So she thought. But now bishop takes the pawn, rook attacks the bishop. If you were playing white here, where would you go with the bishop? Hmm. Yes? Right to the um, move up one. Move back. Move back to the one. <laughs> yep, you're playing like a 500. Good job, OK. So uh, she just defends. And now he's like, all right, I'll take it. You really don't want to be trading that bishop for that knight because uh, your bishop, a really good defender of the king here. But, you know, not worried about it. All right, so rook attacks the bishop. Bishop moves back. Queen up. Rook over. All right, so f5 here, trying to break it open. All right, so now it's broken open. Rook attacks the queen, queen moves. So notice, queen, rook, queen, OK? So just stuff you got to be aware of, OK? Luckily, both these queens are defended. Rook's defending the queen, knight's defending the queen. So, so probably no tactics can happen, but you never know. You got to always be on the watch out for him. So white takes the pawn. G6. So now you're probably really tempted to play knight takes h6 check. But you have better. What's better than knight takes h6 check? Cool. Yes. That's the knight just moves to the left. Uh, All right. Nice try. You have an answer? It's Knight d6, I like it. Fork the queen and the rook. All right. So queen moves. Knight takes the eight. How would you capture this knight back? It's very important that you get this answer right, because there's two ways to capture this knight. 
What's the what's the good way to take? Yep. Yeah. Oh, Brooke, <laughs> that's what's actually played in the game. So once again, you're 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 holding strong at the 500 level. All right. So Rook takes Rook takes the queen. Uh oh. And now now we have a well. If we're not crushing enough, we have a we have a crusher of a move here. White move. White move. Right, white the move and win. <laughs> Queen takes pawn. Yep, the only pawn he can take. And then Robert, such a gentleman, which I never understand. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> Queen g7, mate. Not Queen takes h7, <laughs> making a, a big scene. <laughs> well, I argue that it's one fewer squares to move. <laughs> right, <laughs> yes. And now we have one final game actually performed by a national master. So we can see how a national master plays chess. Is it Claudio? No, it is not Claudio. It is Mr. Jim McLaughlin playing none other than John Boyer time Boyer. All right, and we'll watch it from McLaughlin's perspective. All right, here we go. So, so let's see, we've been playing like a 500 really well. Let's see if we can step it up a notch and play like a 2100. All right. E4, so this is called the Alekhine's defense, all right? So, so a lot of people want to like, oh, I'm going to attack it, I'm going to attack it again. But let's just, let's just not do that. Let's just play normal, OK? Then this queen would be, um, would be um, attacked. Right? So queen could attack the knight? Hmm. <laughs> and the knight attack the queen. Instead, we want to put our knight on f3, OK? All right, so pawn takes, knight takes, g6, bishop e2. All right, why do you think, you know, a lot of players might play bishop, you know, check, which would be abysmal because of c6. Bishop c4 attacks the knight, same thing, c6. So bishop to e2. Where do you think he's got plans with that bishop? To the yeah, maybe just the f3. We'll see. We'll see if it works. Castles, castles, everybody's safe. Now bishop f3. c6 is played. Queen up to e2. So now bishop to e6. Rook d1. So now he's got his power pieces on the same file as the queen. So knight, knight gets in the way. So knight takes, pawn takes, queen c7. So how do you think white is going to protect this pawn in this position? And it corresponds with his last move, actually. Yeah, bishop to b2, right. OK, bishop fianchettos. So good, you're playing more like a 2100 this game. That's good. So g3, knight back attacks the rook. So the knight just gets in the way. Bishop attacks the bishop. Knight takes, OK? So rook takes with check. Rook takes. So rook d8. So he's challenging the file. So after rook takes check, queen takes. e6. Pivotal move here, e6. So obviously, black, he's got some issues here, right? He's threatening check. The bishops are all uh, playing. He's got a little issue here. So, so now black just needs to uh, relax and figure this out. But instead, he plays a really bad move. So my recommendation would be bishop f6. Some people might even say f6. Ugh. But bishop f6 is pretty, pretty nice here. Uh, as you'll see, he decides to play one of the worst moves he can play, queen to d6. Because now after check, king takes, obviously we can now check him again here. What's the only good check we have here? 
Knight to g5, check. And uh, Boyer is in a lot of trouble. All right, so now, so now white has a two-move combination to win it. And you probably don't have to be rated 2100 National Master to find it. Well, let's hope not. All right, you got a, you got a suggestion? So queen behind the knight. Hmm. Nah, nah, nah. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta think uh, forcing moves here. So does everybody know what a forcing move is? It's like I do something and you have to, uh, you pretty much have to make a move that corresponds with my move. I'm forcing you to do something. Like a check is a forcing move because, look, you have to get out of the check. Another example of forcing moves are. Captures, right? I capture you and you have to capture back. All right, Richard. Bishop takes bishop. All right, bishop takes bishop. So, so naturally, the king should probably have to take the bishop, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, we all agree. Now, can we. Push the pawn. Push the pawn, yeah. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. That's how you need to play chess. And then you bang it. Like, yeah. Mario, you see push pawn C5? Yeah. Mario, yeah, Mario, yeah. He saw it, yeah, he saw it three moves ago. So now if queen takes, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Knight checks and forks the king and the queen. And so that's how uh, Jim McLaughlin won some money at the uh, club championship. John Boyer did recover from the defeat as well, and uh, he got a nice check as well. Did he take to the game? No, no. At, at this point, McLaughlin slammed it so hard, Boyer was like, that's it. <laughs> and uh, he left, left the building. So, so that's the club championship, the best and the worst. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Hopefully everybody can join us next year for a lot of good tournaments at the Chess Club. <laughs>